Hi, Tim here, and I just wanted to show you uh, the Google Earth VR application that's just come out on the HTC Vive around about a week ago or so. So there's the Earth in front of us. We've got the sun over there. A couple of controllers. Now just a few things to let you know. I'm going to try and do the first half of this video with no edits at all, just so that you can see how quickly you can move around in this. And also let you know we've got the chaperone system on, so we'll occasionally see blue walls. And I do use the uh, the microphone in the headset uh, during this, and I know it's not fantastic. So, what do we got? Two controllers, load of controls. There's like a tour as well, but I'll just take you through it. I'm going to try and be as quick as possible. So we can drag the earth around with the trigger, so we can grab it and drag. And we can also do the same thing to the sun, so we can actually change the lighting on the earth there. Okay? And then the other thing we can do is we can fly into the earth. The other way of selecting somewhere on the planet is by using the second controller. What we'll first do is just simply fly down, and let's go to Paris. Everybody knows Paris. Now when we get to a certain distance, what you'll see is this light here lights up. And what it's wanting you to do is to flip the earth down so that you can actually see it as if you're stood upon it or flying over it with your feet down to the ground. Now what you should appreciate now already is how much of the earth is actually also modeled in three dimensions, which is absolutely fantastic. Quite a lot of the planet is still just in satellite imagery, but um, Google seem to have managed to 3D model an unbelievable amount of it. Now I'm actually in a certain mode, I'll show you on the menu here. I'll just go quickly to the menu, you can see this allow human scale. Now I've selected that, and that's not as default, but what that means is that I can go all the way to the very ground, and stand here as if we are to scale with these other models. And like I said, I'm going to try and be as super quick as possible. So there we have Notre Dame. We're in Paris. There's the Seine. There's Ile Saint-Louis. Over here, we've got the Louvre. Hopefully, people recognize a fair bit of this. The Gardens Tullier, Musée d'Orsay, Place la Concorde, the small and large palace, Champs-Élysées, the Arc de Triomphe. You can stand and look around the various avenues. And then off into the distance, there's the business district with the uh, Grand Arche de la Défense. And of course, we've got the other famous landmarks, like we can go through the Tocadero to the Eiffel Tower. We can go down there. So there's the Seine. We can go up to the top of the Eiffel Tower. There it is. I can crouch down. There we are. There we have the top of the Eiffel Tower. Look around. Fantastic. Now, if I'm super clever, let's see. The Sacre Coeur, I think, is over here. It's up on a little hill. So there we have Montmartre and Sacre Coeur. And what you'll see is the models sort of build themselves. I think sometimes they're either in memory or they get pulled in over the internet. I'm in China right now on VPN, so sometimes it's a little bit slow for me. But uh, building pretty fast. So there's Sacre Coeur, and then there's Montmartre, the whole uh, artist's area. So there you go, there's Paris. Unbelievable. Now, what I can do is either I can either fly up or I can use the globe and I can select somewhere else. Let's go somewhere completely different. So, like I said, this is all non-edited so far. Let's go to Hong Kong. So we can zoom into Hong Kong. There we are. Go flip down. And again, there we've got Hong Kong. So we've got Kowloon over the other side. And then we've got the central district. And we can go up onto the peak. I think it's about here. Is it about here? Is that where the train ends? And you can see that classic view of, of Hong Kong. And there's the other side of the island. You can get right down into the buildings. And again, you'll see I'm moving around pretty fast here, but hopefully things will catch up with me. We'll get some detail coming in as I stand here. 
there's Hong Kong. Now I can t rotate the world with the thumb button. Let's go to New York. Now I usually miss New York, so let me make sure I don't make any mistakes. There we go. So we can go over to the Statue of Liberty. Put it down. There she is. So there we go, the Statue of Liberty. We've got Staten Island over there. We've got New York. Uh, this <laughs> part of Manhattan Island. Okay. So there's the tower. Unbelievably detailed models. And literally hundreds of other places. Again, let's change significantly. I know Croatia pretty well, so let's go down to Zagreb. And Zagreb is 3D modeled as well. Let's flip it down. So there we have the main central square of Zagreb, which is. Um, that's where the statue stands. Um, the models aren't great. I think this is because of the shadows. But there we have the central town. Let's hover above it. That's Dolat. That's where a market is. There's the central cathedral. This is the old town up on the hill over here. Goes out to the river. So there's uh, another famous church. That's St. Mark's. Okay. With its detailed roof. Take off, we can see the football ground over here. I saw YouTube, I saw YouTube play here. <laughs> so that's where the uh, Dinamo Zagreb plays. So you can see, just details all throughout this. There's the river, goes off into Slovenia. There's something else that we can see as well. Let's see, we go to France. So that's all cities so far. Let's see, let's go into some, let's see, if we're clever, there you go, there's Mont Blanc, so let's go and land on Mont Blanc, so you can see not just cities, but what we'd also get is this fantastic level of geometry, with mountains and valleys as well. So we're right on the top of Mont Blanc, but then we can dive down into the valleys. And I'm going to guess that we don't have any 3D models down here. Not everything is 3D modeled in the buildings at all. But there's an unbelievable about amount that is. So, uh, no. Now, one thing I have noticed, though, is that Germany is. Germany is incredibly well modeled. So if we go to Bonn, Hello, Bonn. There we go, there's Bonn. I have some friends that live in Konigswinter. Now, Konigswinter is a small, well, small-ish outskirt to Cologne and Bonn over there in the distance. So they live somewhere around here. I won't tell you exactly where, just in case they don't, don't want me to let you know. But there's a, a relatively small town in Germany, and it's completely modelled. Now, one thing you might see, by the way, that I haven't mentioned yet, is that whenever I'm moving around, the, the screen goes into a smaller circle, and that's actually quite a clever way of Google trying to limit the amount of data that's having to be transferred whilst you're navigating around like this. So I don't see any problem with that at all. The other thing I should mention I haven't said so far is that within the menus, you'll see that there's various featured places you can go to, uh, and there's certainly tours, which are like little uh, pre-recorded videos, so you go to them and it takes you around. And there's also cities, nature, and then there's save locations. I haven't saved anywhere yet. Austria is also seems to be fully 3D modeled. So again, you can see the data coming in. As we land here, there's the castle. Here we are on the river. Okay. So if I just concentrate on the buildings for a second, you can see they gradually become more detailed. There you go.
I've been lucky that's the Colosseum I've landed on top of. There you go. The Colosseum of Rome. Barcelona. There's the sea, this is the Mediterranean, and let's see if we can find Sagrada Familia. Ah, just give me a second here. Mm -hmm. I know it's here somewhere. Oh, look, there's, there's Ramblas. So I think we go up here, and it's over here. Yeah, there you go. So there's Sagrada Familia. Gaudi church that is still being completed at the moment. Okay, you can even see all of the construction, the construction work going on. So Las Vegas. So we can go down to Las Vegas. Now we've got Las Vegas over there, or most probably more interesting would be the Hoover Dam. Let's just make sure I go to the right place. There it is. go. Another quite detailed 3D model. You can look down, get down on your hands and knees, see that Hoover down there. Of Siena, there we go. So and there's the town square in Siena. So we've got Florence nearby as well. There you go, there's the Duomo Firenze. Okay, so what about Japan? Now let's see if we can find uh, Kyoto. There we go. there recently on holiday so there we've got the main the main palace now what do I want to try and find everything starts with the train station in Kyoto so I think that's the train station yeah and you got the bus you got the bus stops outside there's the main tower in Kyoto what I found interesting here is that I found where I'd stayed before Let's see, it was. Mm -hmm. That's it. I think I've found. Yep, perfect. So this is one interesting thing. So I know there's the train station. I know here's the river. And just from knowing that, I remember we took a bus. We took it down this main road here, and we got a bus stop just about. Was it here or here? But anyway, I recognise this kink in the road. So we we stayed at a place just around about here. And I think that's a really interesting thing to use with uh, Google Earth VR is the fact that you know you can figure out where it is that you were previously. So we we travelled all the way around this area, and you can actually revisit it again you know, after you have actually come back. So there you go. Uh, a relatively quick tour. I mean, I've spent hours in this thing. You can just go exploring those places you've been before. It's, uh, it's a really fantastic application for, for virtual reality. Thanks for watching.